Hi everyone, this is the first of three videos on stock valuation. By now, you should already be familiar with stocks, particularly common stocks which you have encountered in your previous finance and accounting subjects. As a recap, common stock represents ownership of a corporation, hence the common stockholders are basically the corporation's owners. Common stockholders have a residual claim on the assets of a corporation, which means that they can receive their share only after the corporation's creditors and preferred stockholders are paid. The common stockholders have control over a company through their voting rights and company decisions. They are the ones who elect the directors, and the directors in turn are the ones who elect the management. Common stockholders have a preemptive right so that when a corporation issues new stocks, they can buy a proportionate number of stocks to preserve their percentage ownership. There are various types of common stock which include the following. Classified stocks are those given special designation such as Class A or Class B for certain purposes. Founders' shares are those owned by the firm's founders. They have sole voting rights on company matters, but in return, dividends are restricted for a specified number of years. Golden share is a nominal share that is able to outvote all other shares in certain specified circumstances and is often held by government organization. Common stocks are sold in the primary and secondary markets. The primary market is where companies sell new stocks to investors, such as in the case of an IPO, while the secondary market is where investors trade with other investors. The three main methods to valuing common stock are the following the dividend growth model, the corporate volume model, and the multiplier model. The dividend growth model and the corporate volume model use discounted or intrinsic valuation approach. On the other hand, the multiplier models are consistent with the relative valuation approach. The discounted dividend model computes for the stock's intrinsic value as the present value of expected future dividends. This is expressed in the following formulas. Observe that the dividends are discounted using the present value lump sum formula to come up with the intrinsic value or the market price of the stock today depicted as P hat sub zero. Hopefully by now you have already mastered present value computations since there will be a lot of those in this subject. A variation of the discounted dividend model is the constant growth or Gordon growth model, which is used for stocks whose dividends are expected to grow forever at a constant rate G. Hence. The dividend one year from now, or d sub 1, is computed as d sub 0 times the quantity 1 plus g. d sub 0 is the most recent dividend paid by a company's stock. The dividend two years from now, or d sub 2, is computed as d sub 0 times the quantity 1 plus g to the power of 2. Alternatively, it can also be computed as the previous dividend, or d sub 1, times the quantity 1 plus g. The formula to compute for the dividend stream of constant growth stocks is expressed as follows. The constant growth or Gordon growth formula as derived from the discounted dividend formula is as follows. P hat sub zero is equal to D sub zero times the quantity one plus G all over the quantity required rate of return or K sub S minus G. Observe that the numerator is actually the formula for D sub one. Hence, the constant growth formula can also be expressed as follows. The constant formula cannot be used when the required rate of return is less than the growth rate. The main inputs to the constant growth model are the dividends, the required rate of return, and the growth rate. Let's have a recap on how the required rate of return is computed using the capital asset pricing model or security market line formula. The formula is expressed as follows. K sub S is equal to K sub R F plus the quantity K sub M minus K sub R F times beta. K sub S stands for required rate of return. K sub R F stands for risk-free rate of return, which pertains to the rate on short-term treasury bills. K sub M stands for the return on the overall stock market. Beta refers to the stock's non-diversifiable or systematic or market risk. When risk-free rate is not given in the problem, it can be computed as the sum of real rate of return and inflation premium. The difference between the return on the market and risk-free rate pertains to the market risk premium. Following the CAPM formula, our required rate of return is 13%.
Now we solve for the growth rate. The growth rate can be computed using the following formulas. From these formulas, we gather that the higher the dividend payout ratio or DPO, the lower the growth rate will be. This is because when a company distributes much of its earnings to stockholders as dividends, it will have less money to reinvest in the company, and so the company won't grow as much. The retention ratio is the complement to the dividend payout ratio and is computed as 1 minus dividend payout ratio. Equity is total assets less total liabilities and return on equity is computed as net income over equity. Following the formula, our growth rate is 6%. We take a break here. In the next video, we will be solving problems using the dividend growth model. See you!